If you are not convinced Australia is in the grip of a youth crime wave, you might be after this. Young crooks, some just seven or eight, are moving in gangs that steal cars, rob shops and houses, and they have no fear of the justice system, as you're about to see with this exclusive police body camera footage. Stop! It's like a bloody war zone. Get out of the car! Something's got to give. Most of us now are prisoners in our own home. Another day, another car chase through the suburbs. So here we go, live again. Uh, choppers still going around. Timmy Griffin gives us a running account live on Facebook. Currently there's a carload of armed defenders roaming the streets. As you can see, the police are on the ground here. Cars tearing around. Police on the ground. They're going to get them, I hope, sooner or later. Go get them, lads! And this extraordinary first-hand view comes from the body cameras worn by police. Stop! They had a four-wheel drive with a bull bar on it. They were ramming people out of the way at stoplights, driving on the wrong side of the road, just creating chaos through the city. Like many others, Wendy Ambrose obeyed police instructions to stay inside. But I know a lot of families chose to stay home that day because they didn't want to be on the road and be involved in an accident caused by these reckless juveniles in, in stolen vehicles. Police eventually corner the offenders and give chase on foot. This officer enlists a news car to head one off. Oh, who's out to this road? Then go right. See the helicopter going over shortly. There he is. Actually, I think the car must be fairly close to us now because that's... Uh, yeah, it's the closest it's been this morning. Timmy, the Facebook reporter, sneaks outside. There could be guns and stuff involved here, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to be a little bit careful. Here's the police car. Then police crash tackle one of the fence-jumping offenders. <laughs> this is the reality police are facing in suburban Queensland. Yeah, they've just rammed us. Generally, it hasn't been that bad, and I have to applaud the great work by the Queensland Police Service in, uh, in making sure a lot of those offenders who have been involved recently have been put in custody. Inspector Glenn Doyle heads a special task force set up to cope with youth crime. But it was really an isolated case in this circumstance, uh, and the police acted quickly, and those offenders have been located, and the majority of them in custody and will be placed before the court. Yeah, stingers have gone over them. They've gone over the stingers. Here, body cam vision reveals officers arresting young offenders caught after police deployed stingers to immobilise the stolen car they're in. The full extent of the crime rampage in this area was recently revealed when police charged three youths with 104 offences. Now, the youths are thought to be part of a gang that had taken part in a crime spree across three cities, and the charges included everything from break and entering to stealing cars to threatening police with a replica handgun. Look out, bro! Get out of the way! Get out of the way! Look out! <laughs> this pursuit was part of the crime spree which resulted in 104 charges. It ended up with police making this arrest. We're in a grip of a crime spree. Um, it, it is really sad, yeah. Shop owner Steve Ward is one of the many victims. His corner store targeted by this would-be thief who tries to open his cash register. Thankfully, there's 108 buttons on there and only one opens the till. It was the middle of the day Steve had just left and luckily his staff member was out the back when this happened. She locks herself in the office calling police as she watches things unfold on the security cameras. So he then panic set in and has um, decided to take the whole register because he couldn't get the cash drawer open, which thankfully isn't attached to the register. Um, made a right mess of it. And luckily for you, this guy was a bit of a bumbling thief. The bumbling bandit, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, quite comical, yes. I'm just so, it's, I can see it's funny because no one was injured. He got the till, but no cash and fled in a waiting stolen car. Police caught him several days later. They're young, they're stupid. They're, uh, 
They're certainly not smart criminals. Youth crime by its very nature. Um, we look at uh, young people between uh, the ages of 16 and, uh, and anything up to 24. But uh, we also uh, have found some offenders who are as young as uh, seven and eight. Many of the offenders are too young to drive, but that doesn't stop them breaking into houses, helping themselves to keys and stealing cars. Frequently, the cars end up destroyed like this one, where a group of young offenders lost control. Yeah, we've seen it turn left on Albert Street. Right along with police, and it's clear they spend much of their time chasing stolen cars. But with the ban on high-speed pursuits, it's hard for them to keep up. So they try to isolate the cars and deploy stingers to puncture the tyres. What really frustrates residents and police is that these young offenders are constantly being arrested, constantly being dragged here to court, and it seems constantly walking out again and re-offending. In fact, police say in this city alone there's a core group of 60 to 80 repeat offenders who simply don't care. They say in some cases they'd rather go to juvenile detention than go home. There's a big spate of crime at the moment and they are, they just, they just don't care. There's no real repercussions for them. This young girl is trying to break into Alan Pike's restaurant. She was just wandering in in her socks, just nice and easy, backpack over like she was here for a Sunday stroll. Although she doesn't get in, Alan has had enough. And once we start getting that and getting tougher on these guys, I think there'll be more responsibilities held, there'll be probably a little bit less crime. They're not frightened of the system. It's a big joke to them. Wendy Ambrose says photos like this one snapped from the front seat of a stolen car and posted on Facebook prove the young gangs are winning. So she started a petition calling for tougher penalties. In a week, she got almost 15,000 signatures. It's certainly a nationwide problem. And often you'll find where particular areas of disadvantage occur, where there are areas of high levels of migration, for example. Social analyst David Chalk. Well, in Melbourne, there are particular problems with uh, young kids from African backgrounds. Uh, they've come from places that are war-torn, uh, they have low levels of education, they don't see a way ahead. So, they see it, it's great fun. But this one here, wasn't, it wasn't even on our stolen vehicle. It's... Back on the streets, residents have started to fight back. When they identified this car as stolen, locals let down the tyres so the thieves couldn't come back and take it again. Oh, mate, I was, I was fuming at the time when our car got stolen. A week ago, Robbie Davies pulls up at this busy intersection and hears an almighty crash. He looks over and sees that a car has driven through the intersection, colliding with another car. Thinking he can help, Robbie jumps out and runs over. It's then he sees the driver from one of the cars grab a sports bag and take off on foot. Yeah, he said, don't chase me. So I chased him. After about 100 metres, Robbie had him. He went to jump over the fence and that's when I just went for him, grabbed him while he wasn't looking at me. Robbie wrestles him to the ground. With the help of another trade, he hog ties him with gaffer tape and takes a look in his bag. Oh, there was bundles of 50s, all nicely neat stacked and yeah, a bit of drugs in there. And so I thought, no wonder why he was running, didn't want to be chased. It's alleged the bag contained more than $31,000 in cash and a large quantity of drugs. Police confirming a 27-year-old man is facing six drug-related charges. And while police praise the work that Robbie did, they're not suggesting that anyone else does the same thing. But no doubt Robbie won't be the last one to take on these young crims if there are too many more days like this one. It, it is really sad, yeah. Tragic. Yes. Yeah, I'd agree, tragic. And they, they I don't see an end in sight. They, they don't, it's a badge of honour for them. In most parts of Australia, we can't identify juvenile offenders, but the recent spike in youth crime has led to calls for the courts to name and shame children as young as 10.